Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hello, Millie. I'm Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com, and now we're going to bring on my mom, Millie Garfield. Hi, Millie. Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm great. I want to bingo again today. I got a Mr. Goodbar. Oh. <laughs> now, that's nutty, right? Did you eat it? I it's did. Nutty. It has nuts in it. Yes. Oh, delicious. I'm, I know I've had it before. I'm going to save it for later. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you won once. I just won one time and I won Mr. Goodbar. Great. Have you seen the movie? I didn't see a movie today. No, Mr. Goodbar. I think it was a movie. Oh, no, I don't think. No, I never saw the, the movie. <laughs> okay, so we have a lot to cover today. And the first thing I want to get all set up over here is um, some artwork. So let me get that. Let me get that artwork and we'll, we'll bring it up. Oh, let's see where that is. Um, do, do, do. Why don't you tell us about the artwork and I'll go find it. Okay. I've, I'm enjoying my artwork, the pencil colors very much. I get a lot of satisfaction out of it. It's relaxing. I prefer it to sitting there using the pencils rather than even putting TV on. I'm not watching TV like I used to. I just get out of my favorite coloring book. I don't even put the TV on. I just have a quiet apartment and I think about what kind of colors I want to use tonight. And what I thought about when I did this blue and yellow one, I said, gee, I have not used yellow in a long time. The yellow pencil I, pencils I have don't give me a lot of rich color. So I don't use it too often. But this time I hunted and I found a color color that I held onto and pressed down on the paper lightly. And so that's why you see that yellow. But the blue is, is prominent here. And I'm very happy with it because I never did this combination before. So I'm very happy with it. When I first started coloring, I used to do flowers. I did animals, I did tigers, I did lions, and I enjoyed those. But now I'm into this business with the, these uh, sketches like this. And I, I'm turning them out like pancakes. I, I've done a lot of them. And what I have not done, and I'm going to start doing now, I'm going to put the dates on the back of each card. So I'll just say July 21 or June 21, which I have not done. And all the ones you're seeing here, I'm producing, I get going and I, I look at the clock and an hour's gone by and I said, well, oh, it's 11 o'clock, it's time to get into bed. So I spend a lot of relaxation doing them. Satisfaction, relaxation is something I created. So I'm very happy with them. And you have to choose the colors, the ones that go together and where they go in the drawing that's right and what i start sometimes i don't even have a plan of what colors i'm going to use but i start out using a particular color because that's the one i think i haven't used in a, like this orange i haven't used that orange in a lot so i do all the parts of the sketch and i use the orange for the whole thing so i have that one crayon for the orange and then I choose another pencil and I use a lot of that color throughout. And then I'm careful too to leave parts of it uncolored, like this one. Oh, right. Places that are not, it's good that I added the white in there, otherwise it would be too, too dark of a sketch. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So as I go along, I learn different techniques. And they're working for me. And I'm not an artist. I can't start anything without a basis. And all I do here is just choose the color and fill in the sketch. I think you're an, artist. you're an artist. I think you're an artist. I think many artists get inspiration from existing things. 
and then they 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 copy things. Yep. So you're an artist, ma. Okay, thank you. It's like a comedian. Comedians don't many don't think of a of a joke beforehand. They listen to other people and steal, if you want to use the word steal, they embellish, I'll use it, say embellish, they embellish on what they heard from a comedian and make it their style and their joke. And I think that's the track I'm on with this. Yeah, I think that's what my father did. He was very good at taking other people's jokes and making them his own. All right. I mean, when so, I was little, I didn't know that, but he was a big right. fan of Henny Youngman, I'll have to say. Yep. So, yeah, so you mentioned, um, what did you mention? Old, pe old, old people? I, this is what I'm thinking of. Last time you met a 102-year-old person in your yes. assisted living place, yes. and today you're telling me you got introduced to a 2,000-year-old man. What? Is that happening? That just happened yesterday. They're getting older on me. I'm getting older. They're getting way older on me. Yesterday, I had the pleasure to hear Chaplain Anna. She is here every Monday at 2 o'clock. Most Mondays. Nothing is guaranteed here. But I see in print, she is supposed to be here every Monday or two. And when I know she's going to come, or maybe she's going to be here, I make it a point to be at her session because she's excellent, whatever she does. And this time, when I went yesterday, her topic was Jewish comedians through the years. And she spoke, and she also showed a video of some of the old comics who used to appear at the Catskills. And that's where they made their reputation. That's where people found them. And then uh, one of the people she mentioned was uh, Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks. They've been in the business for many years. And in recent years, what they did, they came upon a plan where they talk to each other. And then the show is called something like 2000 year old man. And these guys talk to each other unplanned. They didn't know what they were going to say. Maybe they knew the subject, but they didn't know how they were going to express themselves about the subject. And it turned out to be a big hit and they were funny. And I thought about it afterwards, and I said, hey, that's what Steve and I do. We pick subjects that we know we're going to talk about, but I don't have a written plan of what I'm going to say, but I just say it just like they do, did. And they were a big hit, and if I can assume so, we're a big hit too because we're funny also. <laughs> Yeah, let's see if we can play a little bit of this. Are here to okay. Do the highlights of the last 10 years. Uh, well, but the last 2,000 years belongs to Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, ladies and gentlemen. This gentleman here is one of the phenomena of the world. He looks no older than Mr. Sean, and yet he is 2,000 years old. Is that true, sir? Yes. You want to see my driver's license? No, no. We, we have to authenticate. The Mayo Clinic has checked you out and said that you are 2,000. Sir, what has kept you alive for 2,000 years? When I'll go in an airplane, if I'll go in an airplane, I'll never sit in the first two seats or the last two seats from an airplane. You mean not sitting in the first two or the first last two seats two the last two has seats. kept you alive? I don't understand that. Why? Has that because kept you if the plane, unfortunately, should take a flop out from the sky, you're going to go down with it and break your foot. Right? <laughs> yes, but if, if the plane, as you say, flops out of the sky, everybody in all the seats will break their feet. I mean, at least. Yeah, let me amend that. Any seat is no good. In other words, you're afraid to fly in an airplane. On the nosy. <laughs> I see, but why? Because if the good Lord meant men to fly, he would have given them tickets, right? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> people, 
people can go see all of that. There's, there's the 2,000-year-old the man, and I think there's the return of the 2,000-year-old man, and people can go um, find that on YouTube and watch it. Right, Ma? Oh, yeah. So you yeah, like that. I wouldn't mind seeing that again and again. Never get tired of that humor. I'll, I'll send you that link. Next up on our list of things to cover today, can't open the door. Now, we might have talked about you having trouble opening the door to your courtyard. What's the update here? Well, I live in a community where there is a lovely courtyard, trees and grass and ducks and water. It's lovely. On a nice day, I like to go out and sit out in this beautiful place. But the trouble is I can't open the door. I use a walker to get around with and the door is too heavy for me to handle. And so I found, took me a while to find this wonderful person who has a good position here. She listens, she talks, she takes action. And I was talking to her, I talked to her a few times and I talked to other people about this too, but mainly I spoke to this person and I told her the trouble I'm having, the only way I can get to sit out in the courtyard is if I find an employee that can open the door for me and leave it ajar so that when I want to come back in, I don't have a problem and I can get back in. And she took action. She put this push button on a list to add this expense to the budget. Now it's on the budget and they're going to, I don't know when, I hope it takes, it happens soon, but it's on the budget. Now they have the money to put a push button there, which is needed. And that would be a big help to a lot of people. You could just push the button and get out and push the button to get back in. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So I will be happy to update you on when I hear the action is going to take place. So that's my latest thing. Yeah, the other day, I, it was nice out. I heard the next day it was going to rain. I said, oh, I've got to get out there today. And I go out. But there wasn't an employee around. There wasn't even anyone there to open it for me. But finally, someone showed up, got got me out and fixed the door so I could. And it turned out it was too hot out there. So I didn't stay too long. But I got out and got some fresh air. And I hope that time comes up soon. Optimistic I am. And, and trustworthy I am of this wonderful person who took action. Yeah, that's great. I mean, yes. and it took you to bring it to their attention that that's something that's probably been needed for 10 years. Yes, I think so. <laughs> All right. The next thing that we have talked about, I think, is that you, there outside of your place is an alcove with a light. Yes. I jumped on this too, because you couldn't turn on the light. So I went out there to see what the problem was. And I turned the switch on, off, didn't work. So I replaced the light bulb with a brand new one and I turned the switch on and off and nothing happened. So we're like, it must be a larger electrical problem that I can't fix in your place. So we asked for that to be fixed and we got the answer back that a nurse <laughs> over at the nurse's station had to flip a switch to allow you to flip your switch to turn the light on. So what's What's the update here? The update is they gave me a runaround. I kept trying for days <clears throat> because I like the area. It was a nice place outside of my apartment. So it was a little different environment and I could sit there and relax. I could even use my phone out there to make phone calls, but the light wasn't working. And they told me all this and I'll spare you all those details. And then finally they said, the repair man is on vacation. So we have to wait till he comes back so he can fix it. So finally, he came back and he fixed it. And when he fixed it, 
I got the report that the nurse upstairs had to be contacted to put the light on. Well, <laughs> that was not a good system. That was not working right. That makes so, no sense. No sense. So I call. I spoke to a few people about that. So I don't know just exactly. I can't tell you who was effective in getting it taken care of. Right. But someone with authority got got it done to this point as of this moment as we speak. That light is on and it never goes off. In right. the middle of the night, you open your door, that light's on. And I said, I can't shut it. I can't shut it. I don't need it. But that's the way it's set up. Right. I heard about this fix for you. And what I heard was at the nurse's station, there's a label on the light switch and it says, leave on for Millie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So at the nurse's station, there's a there's, they control these lights that are in the hallway. And the reason for it is in the daytime, they have all the hallway lights on bright. Okay. And then in the nighttime, they put those dim and okay. then they put these specific lights on. Like that was one that they would turn on at night. Uh -huh. But no one was using the alcove like you did for reading. So they didn't know someone wanted it on during the day. So now at the nurse's station, there's a label <laughs> and it says leave on for Millie. And it's just always going to be on. I'll have to go take a look at that. I think I think I should be on a list of volunteers paid volunteers or paid employee because if i have something that's bothering me i try to find the the right person to talk to in a very nice manner to tell them the situation and ask for their help and yep. i i don't give up nope now i'm on the board <laughs> <laughs> Leave the light on for Millie. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna continue doing that. Maybe they'll hire me. Maybe they'll make a little side money. <laughs> okay. It happen. You never know. Next. I never know. No. Next, next topic. So the topic is can't hear. This is about your hearing. Big news. So share, let's share that news, Ma. Well, the big news is Stephen took me to Costco. I shouldn't mention a company name, but he did take me there because I heard a lot of people are very happy with the results of their hearing aids. So we went and we had the exam. I went through the whole procedure. And the end was he found something. I had confidence. The guy was very helpful, very good. And he got to a point where he figured out what would help me. And he gave me the ear pieces. He put it in my ear and it worked good. And then he asked me to put them in myself. And he saw when I was trying to do that, I could not manipulate it because I also happened to have an eye, a, a hand figure problem. <laughs> so he saw it would be difficult for me to get them in. And so he proceeded to think about it and see how he could help me. And since I am in an assisted living, his suggestion was I have to wear them many hours in a day and get used to them. He suggested to me that I ask the aide when she comes in to put them in for me. Well, that's great. It'll only take her a minute or two to put them in, and hopefully they'll work and I can get adjusted to them. It'll. It, he spoke to me, told me it's going to take time because I haven't heard a lot of these sounds for a long time. They're going to sound too loud for me. So he said something like, wear them six, six hours a day. Mm -hmm. Get used to the loud sound. Yep, that's true. Yep. So I am hopeful and encouraged that I'll have someone to put them in for me and I should hear better because a lot of people can't hear well here. The population has that problem. 
And so here I am trying to hear them. They're trying to hear me and it's not good. So I'm hopefully optimistic that this is going to help. Yeah. Everyone. I mean, I know it's going to help because in the soundproof room where they were testing the hearing aids and you put them in to try to make sure they were the right ones for you, I could talk at a normal voice and you could hear me. So it's going to be a, lot, it could be a benefit for me too. Yes. And everyone who has to talk to you, then they don't yeah. have to, you know, talk louder and it's an effort. Right. Yeah. So, and uh, I think our, I have another appointment next week. We have to wait two weeks till they come. And the wonderful thing about doing business with these people is the price is right. No question. You have a guarantee for six months. And if they are not effective for you, you return them and get your money back. Yeah, it's a great guarantee. An amazing offer. Offer. So, so we'll be keep our fingers crossed about that yeah. one. That's going to be great. Okay. We have a comment here from Joseph Jaffe, who just landed back in the hospital, and he says he had to tune in from my favorite mother and son streaming show. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joe. Oh, I I hope things go well for you. You were doing so well, and you looked so great. You have to get back into that shape and get out of that hospital. That's <laughs> what I wish for you. We were, we were talking about hospitals the other day and someone's mother was in the hospital and I said that, she, oh, um, a friend's mother was in the hospital and we didn't know when they were going to get discharged. And I said, are they going to ask to be discharged after lunch? Because that's what you do. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course. So Joseph, I hope you they straighten you out and that you you get out of there soon. And it, you know if you stay for lunch tomorrow, if it's that's the day you're leaving, they give you a nice lunch. Right. You know, if you're yeah. in the hospital and you're washed out, they're sending you home. You have to eat before you come home. Yeah, have a nice lunch before they right. get you out of there. Not such a good lunch. At least it's lunch. My mother has a lot of tips on food in the hospitals I mean, that could take us another hour but order order two meals in case you don't like one well i ordered two, <laughs> i ordered two things for lunch today and i only got one of them and my co-people here who i had lunch with they were already eating their lunch and i only got like an appetizer, and I'm still waiting for the cheese and tomato to come. It never came. So it was a good thing I ordered cottage cheese and fruit. I ordered cottage cheese, and and that was a side, and I was going to get cheese and tomato, grilled cheese and tomato is always a safe thing to order. But I never got the cheese and tomato. So I had a very light lunch, and then they give me an upside down frosted cake. <laughs> I don't want cake with my lunch. So I took the cake home and I'll have that for later. Oh. So you have to know how to order when you're in a hospital or in your some place. You have to take insurance. Yeah. All right. Our final subject for today is the can't see subject of super glasses, I called it, and Let's hear the up update on, on your, your, gl your glasses. Well, we went yesterday. Was it only yesterday, Steve? We went I yesterday. think it was yesterday, yeah. To a special doctor because I'm having eye problems also. <laughs> what else is new? It's always something. And so cataract surgery is just, doesn't matter how old you are. Even if you know you're going to say goodbye to the world, even if you have cataract surgery and you live six months after it's worth it but i'm not ready for cataract surgery yet so what he suggested was eyeglasses that are like special magnifying glasses like reading glasses and they're not available in a store yep they're they're plus six and that is 
the highest level of reading glasses that they can get, give for you. Right. Yeah. So Steve treated his mother, bought the eyeglasses for Well, him. when it was time to pay, and the, yeah. <laughs> the optician says, okay, so do you want, she's good, black or brown, you chose black, and she says, that'll be $20. How would you like to pay? <laughs> then you start looking over at me, so... I said, I guess I'm I'm buying these glasses, so I I bought the glasses for you, which was okay. fine. So last night when I settled down and relaxed and, and took them out, I read a brochure that I got from Brooksby, and it's right. small print, light small print, and they helped me a lot. I was able to read this piece of the. Comes like I had at least a half a dozen pieces of paper with information that I have not been able to read for a long time. So I was able to read the whole six pages, whatever it was, with a little difficulty. But I was able to read. If right, I you haven't been able to read that in a, in, a, in a long time. Right, and so that was good, and I felt good about just sitting there relaxing and reading some information that I was glad to know about. And I tried them again today for a short time. And for whatever reason, they weren't as effective as they were yesterday, but they're still helpful. So I'll keep trying. It's the way you hold it, if you hold it close to you or you hold it further away, but they could help. There's a possibility. And he was showing us something else that was a lot more money and it was a more complicated thing to, to learn how to use. So hopefully I won't have to get into those and just get the most I can out of the, out of this yeah. magnifying eyeglasses. Yeah. I think this is good know. for you um, yeah. because it's easy to use, doesn't require charging or batteries or internet. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so that's, I think that was it for the, for that week. What a week. What a week. Every week is what a week. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and today I had bingo this afternoon after lunch and I was, I knew I was leaving early because we have the show to do, but she, after the bingo, she was having a, another session and it was about, I think it was science, which I never knew they had a, a, a class on that. But I left. But I'll ask the people who went what that was like. And the other day we had Pictionary, which was a lot of fun. So they're going to do Pictionary again. So they have these different little activities that I enjoy and I look forward to. That's great. Yeah. All right. I'll say goodbye to everybody. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Bye, Mom. Always a pleasure. Yeah, great. Bye. I, love you later. I love it. Bye-bye, everyone.